Hello there, this is Dhiri Munduluru and welcome back. Now let's see how Java achieves platform independence but without affecting execution speed. We discussed about compilation and interpretation which offer contrasting benefits and limitations. We have seen that with compilation, we get fast execution speed but without the benefit of platform independence. And we have also seen that with interpretation, we get the benefit of platform independence but with much slower execution speed. And with Java, we get the best of both the worlds. That is Java uses compilation to achieve fast execution speed and it also uses interpretation to achieve platform independence. So let's see how that is accomplished in Java. So we have Java source code which is first compiled by the Java compiler into something called Java bytecode. So it is not the machine code that typical compilers generate but it is an intermediate format called as the Java bytecode and then the compiled Java bytecode can be interpreted on any platform that has a Java interpreter installed. Earlier we have seen this where an interpreter interprets source code directly. But here in the Java world, the interpreter is interpreting the Java bytecode rather than source code. So Java bytecode is an intermediate format generated from the source code. And interpreting this compiled Java bytecode as opposed to interpreting source code directly is what makes executing Java programs much faster. So executing Java bytecode is much faster and let's discuss that in couple of slides from here. Now this Java interpreter is nothing but the JVM which stands for Java Virtual Machine. That is it is a virtual machine that can execute Java programs which include the Java bytecode. So as JVM is interpreting Java bytecode, we can think of Java as an interpreted language. Okay. Also, just like any interpreter, JVM is platform specific and that helps in achieving platform independence. So we have seen this earlier where platform dependent interpreters help achieve platform independence. And similarly with Java, platform dependent JVM would help achieve platform independence. It is just that JVM would interpret Java bytecode rather than source code directly. That's the main difference. So Java bytecode is platform independent while JVM is platform dependent. Just like source code is platform independent whereas an interpreter is platform dependent. So you can see the similarity there. Now let's also look at the commands used for compilation and execution in Java and at the end of this lecture we will also execute these commands on the terminal to compile and execute a Java program. So let's assume we have a Java program called hello.java which includes the source code. So the extension of the file is .java and hello.java can then be compiled to generate a file called hello.class which includes the Java bytecode. And to compile, we use the command java c space hello.java. So java c or javac as it is often pronounced is the Java compiler. Also, it does not matter whether we are compiling on Windows or Linux, the file generated would be hello.class. And hello.class can then be executed on any platform that has a JVM installed. And to execute the class file, we use the command java space hello. Here java is the java interpreter. And it is the same command regardless of the platform. And this command java space hello creates an instance of JVM. Okay, So JVM is just a software and it creates an instance of JVM. That is the operating system loads the JVM into memory as soon as we execute this command. And then the JVM executes hello.class. In other words, JVM interprets the Java bytecode present in hello.class. 
And like I said earlier, we will soon look at this process in action. Now, coming back to execution speed, as mentioned earlier, interpreting Java bytecode is much faster than interpreting source code. And that's because Java bytecode is compact compared to source code and is designed specifically to be interpreted by JVM. Okay, so it is designed specifically to be interpreted by JVM. And source code is designed to be read and written by humans, that is the developers. Moreover, it is already compiled, which means that things like syntax checking, which happens when interpreting source code is already done. So that saves us time. Also, the Java bytecode is to certain extent optimized with certain operations which would make it run faster. And next, to further speed up execution, JVM also performs additional optimization through a process called just-in-time compilation, which will be discussed in one of the subsequent lectures. But this particular optimization will be done at execution time by the JVM. So it is not done by the compiler and it plays a very critical role in making Java programs run faster. Finally note that the Java bytecode's compact form also enables in quick transfer of bytecodes across networks. Recall that Java was originally designed to work in a networked environment where transferring compiled Java programs, which are nothing but the Java bytecode, across different devices was one of the goals. So that's about it and we have seen how Java bytecode and JVM were used to achieve platform independence without compromising on speed. Now let's go ahead and test the platform independence capability of Java. So here I am on my Windows machine and I have this program hello.java which is similar to the hello.c program which we have seen in the platform dependency lecture where we were printing the text hello world. So this class also prints hello world here, the text hello world onto the console. So let's go ahead and compile this Java program. So to compile, as I said earlier, the command is java c space hello dot java. And it would create a dot class file, hello.class, which contains the Java bytecode. So in order to execute it, we say Java, which is the Java interpreter, and it would be space hello. And that would execute the hello.class, which has the Java bytecode. And as you can see, it prints the text hello world. Now let's go ahead and copy this dot class file, which was generated by the Java compiler, onto the Linux machine in order to test the platform independence capability of Java. So here is hello.class which was generated by the compiler and which has the Java bytecode. So I copied it. Next, let me just execute that. So we don't have the compilation step here, just execute it. Java space hello, okay. That's it. So it also prints hello world and it shows that Java is platform independent. Okay, so that's about it. Thank you and see you in the next lecture.